Have you ever looked at the betting markets and seen Manchester City at 13 to 8 and wondered, how did they come up with that price? How can I come up with my own price? And can I beat the bookmakers and the betting exchanges? Well, my name's Tom Brownlee from bookiebashing.net. And in this video, I want to show you how to come up with your own price for Manchester City to beat Newcastle United. We'll break it down into step by step. And look, you're not going to need a PhD in statistics to understand this. It is fairly straightforward. You won't even need a subscription to any value betting software. All you're going to need is a pen and paper or preferably Microsoft Excel. And I'll show you how you can put together a worksheet to model the probability of correct score and match odds so that you can see if you can get an edge over the market. And people often say, well, you can't beat the millions of pounds that the traders have got in their odds compiling departments at the bookmakers. I promise you, you can. And I'll show you at the end of this video how profitable this methodology would be historically on Betfair Exchange. So let's start by looking at an example tonight. Here is Newcastle versus Manchester City on Betfair Exchange. So this is meant to be efficient. The back's 100.7 and the lay is 99.6. So the fair odds are somewhere in between these. Newcastle are 2.84, Manchester City are 2.58, and the draw is 3.75 to back. So how are we going to come up with our own probabilities to compare against these Odds. Well, our input into the model is going to be XG, expected goals, the average number of goals we expect these teams to score in this match. There's a variety of ways of estimating XG. We can look at the last 10, 20, 30 games and then weight this average against the current opposition. So if they've been playing weaker teams and, you know, Manchester City is a stronger team, presumably the most teams Newcastle have played recently we can weight that number. Another way of doing it is just borrowing XG from the markets. That is a lot faster. You can go onto any spread betting site and then just have a look at the number of expected goals in the game. For me, I've got my own numbers. I've got 1.5 for Newcastle and 1.58 expected goals for Manchester City. So let's plug these into an Excel sheet. So if I have my XG here, and Newcastle is the home team, Manchester City the away team. And I predict there's going to be 1.5 goals for Newcastle and 1.58 goals for Manchester City. And so now my objective is to turn these figures into probability of Newcastle winning the game, Manchester City winning the game, and some correct score numbers as well. So the question is, how do I turn these numbers into match odds for home, away, and draw? So before I do that, just a little bit of mathematical background. This is the only bit of maths we're really going to touch on in the entire video. We're going to use a Poisson probability distribution. Don't fall asleep. Wake up at the back. It's not as dull as it sounds, and we're only going to skirt over this. What is a Poisson probability distribution? It's a discrete probability distribution that estimates the number of events that will occur in a fixed interval of time and space, given that those events are random. Like goals, what do we mean by discrete? Well, we mean the events are countable, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and they go up in those whole number integers. So we don't score in 1.5s and 2.5s, and this isn't rugby or NFL. It's great for football. So we're going to use Poisson as a first model for taking those average expected goals and creating a correct score market. Let's do that now. So our first step is going to be to create a correct score market. We want to know the probability of nil-nil. Why? Why does that help us work out the probability of the match odds? Well, what is the probability of a draw? It's just the probability of 0-0 zero, zero, plus 1-1 one, one, plus 2-2 two, two, plus 3-3 three, three, plus 4-4 four, four, and 5-5. Five, five. I mean, we can keep on going until it's statistically irrelevant. We might not want to work out the probability of 330 against 330 because 
3.30, 3.30 has never happened in football. So we can stop at some statistically relevant juncture. Breaking this down, let's start with just working out the probability that this match is going to finish nil-nil. If I put my home score here and I put my away score here and I'm going to have nil and I'm going to have nil. Now, as we said, we're going to use our Poisson distribution, but we don't need to do any funky maths or use a calculator. This is why I've asked to have access to a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. All we need to do is plug the following equation into Microsoft Excel. And look, if you don't want to follow the equations on this video, there's a link in the description that will take you to a blog where I've got a spreadsheet. In fact, this spreadsheet that you're looking at, you can download it, you can use the equations there. So I'm going to use a Poisson distribution. Let's put it here. And to do that in Excel, I'm just going to type in equals Poisson dot dist, Poisson distribution, open the bracket, and it's going to ask me, what target are you looking at? Well, the target I'm looking at happens to be zero. So I could type in zero here, or I could just make it this cell. And then what is the mean? Well, the mean is 1.5. That's how many goals we expect Newcastle to get. And then we finish the equation with false because we want exactly zero goals. And that will give us the probability of Newcastle scoring zero. So to get nil-nil, we just have to take that and multiply it by the Poisson.dist of Manchester City getting zero, which is E4, given Manchester City's XG, which is B5, and again false. And when we do all of that, Excel tells us that the probability of nil-nil in this game is 4.59%. So that's nil-nil. Now let's build up the probability of a few different score lines. So I'm going to assume that Newcastle are going to score up to 10 goals, and I kind of don't care. I think it's going to be statistically irrelevant after 10. I don't really see a lot of 11 goals scored by a team in this match. The only exception sometimes I have is if I'm modeling something like USA women versus Thailand women. Occasionally, then you might want to consider modeling past 10 goals. At Bucky Bashing, we go up to 2020. Um, haven't ever found a need to go further than that. So I have all of my score lines of Newcastle to score between 0 and 10 goals and Manchester City to get 0 goals. So let's just repeat this pattern, but we'll repeat it with Manchester City getting one goal. And by doing this, we can build up a correct score grid. So that's all score lines from nil nil to 10 10. And I can just copy my column H all the way to the bottom. And I now have my probabilities. If I sum all of my probabilities up, I sum to 100.00%. So I know that I statistically don't really need to go beyond 10 10. The odds of something happening beyond 10-10 are 0, 0.00 to two significant figures. Now that's the correct scores, but what about the outcome of the match? What about the match odds? Well, as we said, the sum of all the draws is just the draw price, and the sum of all the home wins is the home price, and the sum of all the away wins is the away price. So in this column F, I just need to know what is the outcome. And the outcome is, well, if they equal each other, it's going to be a draw, obviously. And if the home score is higher than the away score, then it'll be a home win, which is one. And if it's neither of those things, it has to be an away win of two. And I can copy that outcome all the way down. Now, let's summarize all of those probabilities. So we have the home win, the draw, and the away win here. And when we do that, Excel will tell us that the probability of Newcastle winning this match using Poisson is 36.3. The draw is 23.9 and the away is 39.7. And if we want to get decimal odds out of that probability, we just take the reciprocal to the power of minus one and we see that Newcastle are 2.75, the draw is 4.18 and Manchester City is 2.51. Now, the astute amongst you might be looking at those odds and you might think, but hold on, 
The exchange said that the draw was 3.75. Here we have 4.18. And you'd be absolutely right, because whilst Poisson can generate a correct score market, it's been proven not to be perfect. What tends to happen with Poisson is it underestimates the probability of 0-0 zero, zero, and to a lesser extent 1-1, one, one, and it overestimates the probability of narrow wins of 1-0 and 0-1. The reason for this is right back at the beginning we said that we needed a discrete probability distribution because we assumed that the goals were random and happened at fixed intervals. In reality, the longer the match goes on at nil-nil, the higher the probability that it's going to finish nil-nil relative to pre-match expectations. And that's because as a match goes on and no goals are scored, teams start to get defensive, less attacked-minded. And so there are real-world changes. The events aren't quite random and fixed in nature. So we can't just use a pure Poisson probability distribution to model this problem. Step forward Mark Dixon and Stuart Coles with their landmark paper, Modeling Football Association Scores and Inefficiencies in the Football Betting Market from the Journal of the Royal Statistical Society, Series C, Applied Statistics, 1997, which was a hugely influential piece of work in the world of sports analytics and predicting football matches and is still used as the gold standard of models to predict the outcome of a football match. So what does Dixon Coles do? Well, it takes those four score lines where Poisson underestimates and overestimates and it just adjusts them to make them more accurate. So it takes nil-nil and to a lesser extent 1-1 one, one, and it adjusts them so that the output no longer underestimates the probability and it takes 1-0 and 0 1-1 and it adjusts them so that the output no longer overestimates these probabilities. From 2-0 onwards, it's exactly the same. It matches Poisson. So how much does Dixon Coles adjust 0-0, 1-0, 0-1 and 1-1? Well, actually, it can vary by competition. Some competitions, you see a lot of underestimation in 0-0. Other competitions... There's less so. And this adjustment factor is called a row number. Now, we don't really need to know what this is. All we need to know is that other people have done a lot of work on the row number. And we have a list of row numbers by competition over at bookiebashing.net if you are ever interested to do this particular exercise. But you've got a game in La Liga or the Bundesliga. In the Premier League... Historically, it has been shown to be minus 0.13. So that's what we're going to use in our model here. And in column I, next to Poisson, I'm now going to have my Dixon Coles number. Now here in nil-nil, what I want to do is I want to adjust this nil-nil by a function of Newcastle's goals, Manchester City's goals, and this particular row number. And here is the equation that I've stuck into Excel. It just takes the probability of Poisson for nil-nil, and it multiplies it by 1 minus the home XG times the away XG times the row number. And if we do that, we end up with 6.01%. For 1-0, it's a slightly different equation because it is overestimating 1-0, Poisson is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the Poisson probability and we're going to multiply that by 1 plus Manchester City's XG multiplied by the row number. The opposite will apply for 0-1 where we're going to multiply by 1 plus Newcastle's XG multiplied by the row number. And for 1-1, finally, it's just going to be the probability of Poisson multiplied by 1 minus the row number. Every other probability will be the same as Poisson. And so now let's see what match odds probability we get with the Dixon-Coles method. So if I copy over the Poisson to the Dixon-Coles, we now see that Dixon-Coles estimates the probability of Newcastle to be 34.9%, the draw at 26.8%. 
And if I turn these into decimal odds, we see 2.87 for Newcastle, 3.74 for the draw, and 2.61 for Manchester City. And what we see is those numbers align perfectly with the efficient exchange market. So now we know we can take an XG of 1.50 for Newcastle and 1.58 for Manchester City. And by using a row number of minus 0.13, we get exactly the same numbers that they get on the exchange. Okay, we have some confidence that the model works. And if you want to give it a go yourself, you can download the spreadsheet from the blog. The link is in the description below this video. All of that's very nice, but now you might be thinking, great, what a wonderful academic exercise, but how can I make some money out of this? So can we make any money using Dixon Coles? Let's have a look at 3,090 football matches in the Premier League and the Championship between 2022 and the beginning of 2026. And we're going to take the correct scores in there because I've got all of the closing lines for the correct scores. And we're going to back with a unit win strategy to win £100 in every single bet. So you adjust the stake based on the magnitude of the odds. First of all, let's take a look at Betfair Exchange. We would see this graph here. It's an efficient market. It converges to zero, actually about 0.1% profit. That's what you would expect with an efficient market. It doesn't include commission. If we include commission, we see a £5,000 loss minus 1.5% return on investment, almost all of which goes to Betfair Exchange in commission. Now, Let's have a look at Dixon Coles. Let's use a strategy where we're only going to back where the Betfair price, the exchange price, is higher than the Dixon Coles method. And if we do that, we see this graph here. This is to win £100 on each bet with commission of 2% applied at the exchange. And now we go from minus £5,000 to plus £15,000. Look, of course, there are some caveats. We did go to three and a half thousand bet break even run right at the beginning of that and it does assume we're able to bet on all of these markets with enough liquidity at the closing lines but it does show that there is potential to beat the markets with dicks and coals so look you don't need any fancy software to do this you can mock up your own excel spreadsheet if you want to use mine, the one I've used in the video, there is a link in the description below this video. It will take you to a blog. You can download the spreadsheet used in this video for free. Use it to model dicks and coals by yourself. All you'll need is XG as input, which you can generate yourself by looking historically. We'll do a video on how to do that sometime in the future, or even just borrow it from the markets by using an inverse Poisson probability distribution from over 2.5 goals, looking at the spreads. There's a number of different ways of taking it from the markets. Or even just use some value betting software which does speed up the process for you. At bookiebashing.net, we have a list of all matches in primary, secondary, even tertiary competitions with the XG for home and away teams. We even have a Dixon Coles calculator that will tell you the correct score market and the win odds and your Asian handicap and match odds of both teams to score and all markets that relate to home and away and match goals in football matches. Now, there are more advanced statistical techniques that can be used to analyze the performance of predictive models, such as the Briar test, the log loss test, but they all show the same thing as the £100 unit win analysis, and that is that Dixon Coles can be a profitable model for predicting correct scores, match odds in football matches. My name's Tom Brownlee from bookiebashing.net. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like and subscribe below. And you can watch another video like this just up here.